Hello, I'm Daniel, and welcome to the Imuna Project. We here at the Imuna Project are continuing our series of videos with respect to education, infra information, inspiration, guidance, advice. And I want to talk today about the Beza Medrash, the uh, study hall of uh, Rav Yeshua Tzaitlis. Uh, this would have been uh, a place, uh, a meeting place for the great sages and scholars and uh, great minds of his day. This would have been early 1800s in southern Poland. And the, not just Jews, rabbis and sages and tzaddikim and gedolim and all these righteous and holy men. Every once in a while, Christian Bible scholars will come and ask uh, Rabbi Shua um, his insight into particularly difficult passages um, of Scripture. So one day, a Christian Bible scholar came up to uh, uh, Rabbi Yeshua Tzaitlis um, with a question. Uh, and it was uh, with, with respect to the sage's commentary on the biblical prohibition, Leviticus 18.21, of not uh, having your children pass through the fires to Moloch. A little aside, uh, the, uh, the idolatrous cult of Moloch was a particularly gruesome uh, religion where uh, the people would, uh, as part of their service, they would sacrifice their own children in a particularly brutal way. These children offered to Moloch would be burned alive. Being burned alive is certainly the worst way to go. Parents would give their children uh, to be sacrificed, burned alive, and it was a big honor for them. Uh, similarly, uh, these days you hear um, a mother whose son has been a suicide bomber and killed children saying, it was the proudest day of my life when my son blew himself up and took a bunch of kids with him. Hard to understand for us, but sadly it still goes on. Okay, back to the Bezimedrish of uh, Rabbi Tzaitlis. Christian scholar is puzzled over a commentary by Hazal or sages to this verse. Do not allow um, any of your children to pass through the flames to Moloch. Because Hazal says, if one offered one of his children as a sacrifice, he was liable to the death penalty. But if a father, for example, sacrifices all of his children, he has three kids, sacrifices them all, he's not liable to the death penalty. And the Christian was confused because it seems counterintuitive. Certainly, sacrificing all of your children is much, much worse than, as horrible as it is, to sacrificing one child. And he was puzzled, so he came to uh, Rav Yeshua for the answer. Rav Yeshua, Titus listened, nodded, and he says, this is a very uh, profound and a very uh, troubling question, but um, let me give you an analogy uh, with the laws of truma, the laws of setting aside a portion to be uh, offered to the khan, to the to the priest, as a as a, a share, as his portion, his gift, his offering. This is the part that's set aside; it's separated. Chazal. Our sages have not set a minimum amount. Some people give more, some people give less. But if a person, let's say a person has an entire field worth, an entire silo of grain, wheat, say. He takes one stalk of grain, a handful of kernels. That's enough for an offering. That's enough to be set aside. But if the farmer offers his entire crop, it's no good, it's not accepted. If you concentrate, concentrate, consecrates the entire silo for truma, it's considered um, nothing. It doesn't become truma. It doesn't become uh, an offering. Again, if, if, if a mere stalk of, uh, of grain, if a mere kernel of grain is enough, shouldn't an entire harvest, should an entire field, entire... Uh, Silo of grain be enough? The Christian Bible scholar says, this is exactly my point. It doesn't make sense. 
Rabbi Atzaitlis explains, this are sages in their penetrating wisdom has taught us a profound lesson with respect to this halacha, with respect to this law. The Torah requires a Jew to share with the coin, with the priest. To that end, a person has to give a portion of his harvest to the coin. Some people give a lot, some people give less, but it has to be a portion. One does not give everything to the coin, to the priest. Why? Because it's irresponsible. Such a person who jeopardizes his family's financial stability, who, God forbid, puts him in a, in a, in a position of starving, he's not stable. There's something wrong with him. He's not in his right mind. We don't accept the contribution of such a person because we would only be adding to his um, emotional insecurity, his, his craziness. We don't do it. Likewise, someone who offers one child to Moloch, he's, um, he's uh, liable to the death penalty, and he's punished as such. But well, somebody who offers all of his children, who sacrifices all of his children to Moloch, he's not considered an idol worship, an idol, an idol worshiper. He's not an idealist. He's not a fanatic. He's not a zealot. He's nuts. He's crazy. He should be committed to some sort of home for the criminally insane. We judge only those people who are certifiably sane, but sin nonetheless. This person, whether he's the person giving his entire crop for trauma, trying to give it, or the person who offers all of his children to Moloch, he's not, he doesn't fit that standard, and he's not judged accordingly. Um, we're going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Immuno Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.